Benvenuti al nostro workshop. Welcome to our workshop that we have entitled Zero Hunger, Form Action and Educational Perspective. This moment is a second stage with the title Zero Hunger for this month of October. On October 16th, we realized with teenagers from nine countries a world online event. The most important thing about this event was that the teens themselves presented their lives and, their, and challenged us to promote concrete actions where we live, to make our life change towards all those suffering from hunger today, perhaps far from us, but maybe even right next door. It all started in 2018 when the oh, uh, food World Food Organization, knowing that we were a uh, global reality, asked us for help. To learn more about it, we share a patented link where you can find various information. However, we prepared other things, the chart of commitment, a flyer that has already been translated into many languages that we prepared as a center together with various groups of Gen 3 and Youth Teens for Uni Unity around the world. From the beginning, we have seen that this project can be a privileged opportunity to live and give the ideal to many people. For example, the culture of giving. We have seen that living it together with young people helps us to live the colors of the rainbow and the colored pathways or the what we call the ways for a united world or the worlds of new humanity that we call according to our various branches or realities. All of these are paths of action so that each one of us can then in his or her own environment carry out concrete projects according to various needs and cultures. Today, together with some educators from various countries, we would like to discover some of the deepest motivations for which it is so important for us in the movement to embrace a concrete and broad project that afflicts humanity, afflicts humanity and what the relationship is between this project and the desire of all of us to realize, to live the ideal in our professional and in our daily environment. We hear from the boys and girls themselves how zero hunger helps us to live, fully live the head, heart and hands project and their, how they desire to carry ahead this project. Zero hunger form action, a educational perspective. We've accepted the challenge of achieving zero hunger in the world by 2030, but how will we get there? How can we reach more people and spread this way of life? We recognize that this is a very ambitious goal, and for this, we strongly intend to achieve. So let's use our heads. Let's get informed and share the issue, study the issue. Let's read local, national, and international news, because hunger in the world we can also discover it close to home, maybe even in our community. So let's, and, and then we don't even realize it. So let's commit ourselves to be better informed and only in this way can we promote the culture of giving. Let's listen with our hearts to the cries of those who suffer, synthesizing first of all ourselves and those around us. Let's explain the Zero Hunger Project to our friends, classmates, family members. We want to spread peace by sharing this idea. We want to be promoters of peace by welcoming diversity without envying and learning not to steal today so that it's not to steal tomorrow. Let's open our hands to give and to welcome. Let's commit ourselves to avoid all waste, starting with where it's on my plate, looking around and see where our hands can do service. 
But there is a rule that can sum up all of our efforts. It is the golden rule. And it's great and present in all great religions and shared by all the people of goodwill. Do unto others as you would have them do to you. We are aware of the critical situation for which we for which our commitment has been asked, and we are in this together. So we want to take a, a larger step, be, beginning at a social level, but also going ahead with personal initiatives and bring this project to the global level. Education, talk to your classmates, explain what the Zero Hundred Project is and its objective. Embrace this project as your own, raise your voice and act as a group through social media, Let's show our positive impact, benefiting from the social networks that allow us to, oh, excuse me. Excusate. Getting together to hear each other and learn from one another is always a great way to impose ourselves collectively towards our goal. International vision. We're not alone on this, and we don't want to forget it. Let's make the others' problems our own, helping to create a community of worldwide citizens. There's also beauty in our world. Let's celebrate the good things that remind us of our progress. The world is committed to uh, sharing, uh, achieving hung, zero hunger by 2030. Let's unite ourselves with them. Andrea Cardinali, teacher and writer, co-author of the book, hashtag, Generation Hashtag Zero Hunger. He is not here with the Zoom with us, but we asked him some questions. And so we asked him, you wrote this book published by the FAO. You were a protagonist at the beginning the World Food Organization. What developments has this project had inside of you? Good evening, everyone. And first of all, thank you for the invitation to this beautiful event that addresses the issue of world hunger, one of the main goals of the 2030 Agenda. Personally, it was a real discovery because I had heard about Zero Hunger and the 2030 Agenda in general on several occasions, but mostly on television, or at least I had dealt with it from the institutional side. This time, however, with the publication of the book, Generation Fami Zero, Ragazzi in Comune Verso Mondo Senza Fami, Generation Zero Hunger, Young People on the Way to a World Without Hunger, a publication made in collaboration between New Humanity and the World Food Organization. This time in writing the book, I immerse myself in the lives of children and young people around the world who try every day new ways to, to invent new ways to combat the problem combat the problem of hunger in the world, and also to cope with those issues that are very much related to this program, to this problem of zero hunger. Oji. Today. Oji. Today, we have with us Daryl, a youth worker from the United World and a youth for United World in Manana. He currently works as a volunteer coordinator of Living Peace in the Philippines, and he also teaches fundamentals of faith in a high school at the University of San Tomaso. Dar Daryl, are, are you here? What motivates you to use the Zero Hunger program in your school? Surely there are several reasons, but tell us at least one. And thank you, Luci. Ciao, everyone. Good evening. So, for us and for me, you know, hunger is a product of a social sin that is caused by indifference and apathy. These vices create a gap between people that resulted to inequality. To address hunger, we need to uproot its cause, to go back to the basic, which is rediscovering the gift of humanity. The young people who are our future citizens must learn how to embrace their giftedness. 
a humanity that's, that is expressed in loving and sharing. We must let them know that whenever they love and share, their humanness is stressed and highlighted. Basically, we focus on the basic to form the hearts of young people, to be aware that their, that their action, no matter how small or big they are, are passage to create an impact as long as it is done consistently and constantly. It is likened to forming a habit, for example, helping people. We do not give because there is someone in need, but giving is part of our humanity. By doing so, our humanity is highlighted. Thank you, Lucy. Dr. Salomon Diaz, anche te sei qui con noi. Dr. Salomon Diaz, you're also here with us. You're director of the International Relations of the Chadwick International, an international school located in the future city of Songdong in Korea, in South Korea. What motivates you to use the, the Zero Hungry program in your school? Are you there, Sole? Si. Yes, I'm here. Do you hear me? Okay. So if it's okay. Ciao. Thank you for the invitation to share our experience here in Korea. I can maybe share a little bit the importance of this, being able to give the service programs in a school where the majority of the students come from the wealthiest families of an already well-developed nation as it is in Korea. So the mission of our school is very clear to form global citizens with exemplary character, self-knowledge and leadership skills to be able to lead others. And so we have five core values, respect, responsibility, honesty, justice, and compassion. So our role as educators in a place like ours is exactly to promote respect and compassion for others, in, including those who are far away and in much more difficult circumstances in, in compared to us. We want to build relationships by understanding the needs of the others, particularly other children of the same or similar age as our students. We also wanted our students to feel responsible for what happens around them, beyond their borders, beyond our borders. We are confident, we are confident that they can use, our students can use their creativity to help solve the world's problems in ways that we adults may not imagine. And this, I think, this is the secret to the success for their future. We know that our students will be the leaders of our country. So our job as educators is to make sure that they are aware of the global interdependence. Independence. We all need each other and that they understand the value and beauty of cultural and social diversity. So let's all do our part as citizens of the world. Thank you so much, Sole. Now, let's go back to Andrea. Now that you teach in an elementary school, children up to 10 years of age, how do you use the zero hunger material? What path do you propose to your students. We know that you use a method that bears fruit, but is it always easy? Can you tell us some of the difficult results, some of the difficulties and some of the results? So I'm using the Agenda 2030 Zero Hunger Project, particularly in the fifth grade and in the third grade. 
And I have to tell you, the first thing I, that is, I have a large planosphere, which out which I do not even begin because this is fundamental to have a large planosphere on the wall, because before anything else, this path teaches educate education to worldliness. The book generation hashtag zero hunger, as you have seen here, is a book that is already structured to accompany educators, trainers with various groups, whether it's students, school students, catechists, or other youth groups of any time. And it is a path to civic and human education. One thing that particularly strikes the kids right away is that we talk about a lifestyle here. A little bit because they already like this little word and a little bit because they are already coming to terms both in fifth and in the eighth grade with lifestyle with this meaning, the good habits and the good deeds that we can do. And it resolves a little bit around this, that a little bit that I do for this Zero Hunger Project. It all starts with being active citizens, which becomes fundamental. Is an active citizen really only someone who turns 18? Or can you already be a great citizen even as a child? This is the challenge that I launched from the beginning. And obviously the answers are very interesting because you can start to become a citizen of the world even as a child and they show this all the time then there are the real issues the ones that mainly relate to communication and the language you have to use with the kids to reach them the main thing is to keep in mind that obviously you have to have a language that is appropriate for their age and therefore simplify it a lot but also try to fit in as much as possible within their context, whether it is a big city or a small town, just to see where they can act more, where they can do more. And there are three main rules that I have thrown down, written down, but just as a general order, because there is no precise method. You have to deal with who you have in front of you always. And these three words, or a of a general basic nature. And they are participation, dynamism, personal re-elaboration. Regarding participation, first of all, it is important that the whole class participates. They understand right away that this is not a frontal teacher-student lesson, but that we are going to live and experience together. And this is the first important thing to make them understand. Here, an international meeting is about to start at at the World Food Organization, and we will do it together. We will live it together, a moment in which all of us will have a role. And here is a dynam here's to dynamism. Why this atmosphere of an international meeting must be created. Whoever is called to read approaches the teacher as so as if he or she goes on stage with a microphone, which can be real or fake as described by the teacher. And here then obviously begins both the reading, but also discussion, the collective elaboration. So a series of discussions of comparisons that we have in class about the various issues and the various stories that we have read. Then there is the last part, which is the personal reworking. That is, what does the choice of this Kenyan girl say to me personally or this Brazilian child? The young people here have the opportunity to recalibrate their lives in the light of the examples of their peers who live on the other side of the world. At the end of the lesson, of course, I use the interactive whiteboard and multimedia. We see videos. So I use all the tools that I have at my disposal. And then I give them some tracks at the end of each path. I, I give them some ideas. The first track, the first idea, for example, is the red path, which is about the culture of giving, about generosity. And it says, Tell about an act of kindness of generous, generosity that you did. What prompted you to do so? Why? How did the person who received your generosity feel? How did you feel? Or another clue I leave is, you are now at the end of your schooling. What do you remember about the early days of school? How have you changed over the years? What skills have you developed? Here, I put them in front of the fortune that we have to be able to go to school, to be educated compared to some countries where children unfortunately do not, unfortunately do not have this possibility. It, it's an interdisciplinary path of civic and human education that everyone can reformulate according to their own needs, to what their teaching subjects and their 
to their own teaching subjects and curriculum. So you can add further insights according to the educational objectives that you propose. Needless to say, the kids will amaze you. They will be very happy and you will have a fantastic and unique experience all together. I greet you and I remain available. If anyone wants to ask me something, you can write to the email address andika at hotmail.it. Hello, everyone. Andy Carr. Sole. Thank you. Andrea is not here with us. Sole, how did you start the Zero Hungry Project in your school? I know you chose a direct contact with a school in another country, but how did you start? Tell us something about that. So what we did is that we discuss with the students about many different projects and we analyze different strategies to reach our goals, to give our contribution to reach our goal, to end our contribution to end hunger. This was the idea that we presented. So, so then when we identified a place in the world where there was a big need for help, and, and so we contacted the local authorities, the municipal, municipality, to figure out with them what would be the right program and the most effective way to start and maintain a project together. The students went to visit the community in the Philippines to see the project for themselves. So we connected with the Philippines. So they went to see themselves the project, to see the reality of that community where other help and other international help had not arrived. They saw that the students were hungry and they, they were hungry and they needed help. So it was very important for a project to be viable and ongoing, we didn't want to simply send help once and feed the hungry children once in one event and then think that we had resolved everything. We wanted to find, to do this continuously. And we wanted to find solutions to the root cause of hunger in their communities and to find solutions with them, building a relationship with them, a relationship. And that's why our students here in Korea periodically meet with their friends in the Philippines. They call, we call them their friends. And so they meet with them, their friends in the Philippines, as they constantly campaign to raise money to feed them concretely, especially during this terrible pandemic that the world is, is still facing. While participating in this project, the students in the Philippines have the ability to better understand the value of leadership in the leadership in their community and to change their environment to aim high, not us, but together with them, we do this project. So they aim high and they can, so that they can never lose hope. And this is very important. So the project must continue. New leaders must be trained to carry this initiative forward. Thank you, Soli. Now we will see a video about this project. student leader of Philippine Service Learning. I'm an 8th grade student at Traddick International. 
when I was in sixth grade, I have participated in a leadership training program, and since seventh grade, I have led the seventh day. Philippine Service Learning, or PSL, is a group that aims to help less privileged students in the Philippines. More specifically, we help two schools, which are Anisette de Lara Pimental High School and Labo Sands and Technology High School. They are both in Labo, Philippines. We have helped the schools by providing food as well as school supplies. We have also visited the Philippines consistently. More specifically, for UNSDG number 2, Zero Hunger, PSL has an ongoing nutrition program. This program helps to provide meals for students who are unable to provide enough food for themselves. Originally, it was a program that provided free breakfast and lunch from Monday to Friday in school. However, now, students cannot go to school and must stay at home to study with a modular learning program. Because of this, PSL's feeding program has been modified so that we can get food packs. Parents of the recipients go to school every Monday to get the modular learning materials along with the PSL food packs. Many teachers and parents volunteer to help pack the food. The purpose of this new modified feeding program is for the students to stay healthy and to encourage some of the less privileged students to continue their education. No longer is an important issue to me personally. When I was young, of course I did not understand the world. However, once I got to know about what is happening in the world regarding zero hunger, I think that the first thing that I felt was that I thought it was unfair for the less privileged people to not be able to have the access to the resources that we take for granted. I want everyone to be able to have access to a proper meal every day. I want people to feel the happiness and warmness that eating brings. Though what I do may not be able to provide food for everyone in the world, I really hope that me and PSL can bring a change to the lives of a few students. At the end of the day, I want to know that a few more students can sleep with a full stomach. That is why I believe that zero hunger is such an important issue these days, and that is why I spend my time helping the students in PSL. Grazie Karen, grazie Thank Sole. Thank you so much, Karen Sole. Using these projects has become an important educational opportunity, a human opportunity. With us now we have Elena, who's co connected to us from Pakistan. She's a chemistry teacher in high school since 1984 to 2019. She had she obtained in 2018 the Joint Diploma in Integral Ecology. She's the author of the project Given to the Safeguarding the Environment. The project you're presenting is a tool that fully responds to our problem and goes even further. In fact, it is called Giving to Safeguard the Environment. It is a simple project of applied and integral ecology. Can you please tell us about it and tell us some of the pro positive as effects that you have observed. Uh, yes, I will do it. Welcome. I will show it with a few slides first. Can I begin? The project you're referring to, giving to safeguard the environment, actually concerns not only food waste, but all forms of waste, 
but it is a zero hunger project in all respects. At the heart of the project is the energy saving pact in which acts of energy saving are transformed into concrete actions of solidarity, preferably aimed at situations of poverty caused by climate change. There, there are five areas of action, saving of electricity, water, gas, recycling and reuse, and decrease of food waste. Go ahead, next slide. How does it work? Each girl or boy receives a roadmap, roadmap with 200 boxes to be ticked for each act performed. And each act is associated with a lump sum of money in, for example, in Europe, 10 euro cents, in Colombia, 50 pesos, in Pakistan, 50 rupees. Who gives this money to the child? The sponsor can be a parent or a relative or the boy himself who gives of his own, the girl or boy himself. After two months have passed, everyone will have made up to 200 acts of saving and will have capitalized the sum that the sponsor would give to him or her, and that will be used for an action of solidarity chosen by the children themselves. Basically, each class or group of students chooses who they want to support. However, even we of the organizational team offer a solidarity action to be supported freely. This year, for example, we chose the south of Madagascar, where the UN food program has, designed, has defined this place as the first famine caused by climate change. There, the population due to the drought is forced to feed on only cactus leaves and grasshoppers. As I was saying, there are five areas of action for savings and there is a brochure on our website in various languages on the World United, United World website, which Talks has teaching sheets for each of the areas of action. Teachers and educators are also invited to deepen seven themes that deal with the environmental problem from all points of view, social, economic, political, cultural, and so forth. And for this reason, some schools are already using it as a civic education product project. To join the, pro join the project, send an email to this address, dpsar punto uh, point dot wordpress dot com, dpsr dot wordpress dot com. Whereas the address of the website is the same, dpsar.wordpress.com, and there you will find all the materials, including this interview. This interview. Several several years ago, in two thousand and eight, when Sarah, a thirteen year old student, asked me how the idea of doing this project came about, I told her that it all stemmed from my desire to communicate to my students the secret of happiness. 
In fact, in my life, I have experienced that happiness is not the result of having so many things, but it comes from giving, from giving a gift of oneself. So I thought of something that would make the students experience giving, certain that the joy that would follow would encourage them to continue to do this all their lives. And I got confirmation of this, that giving makes happy for one of my students who wrote to me at the end of the year. There is no better way to end a project like this than with the happiness of those who did it. Since I was teaching chemistry and I had to look for something related to my subject, I began to get my students thinking about the imbalance between industrialized and developing countries and its consequences in the environmental field. We realized that while we waste enormously, others don't even have enough to what's necessary. How can we do something for them by giving of our own? And here is the idea of the energy saving pack that I illustrated before. To save, yes, but to give and thus restore some balance to the planet. The students took it seriously. And the fact that they had to help other students like themselves through small acts of energy saving gave them wings. So what they never would have done just out of duty, now had a greater purpose and was really worth it to them to do it and to encourage others to do it as well. In no time at all, the first class to join involved 85 students from three other classes at the Institute, raising a nice little nest egg for the students in Congo who lacked everything. But for them, the most important thing of the project was to experience that this way of doing things gives birth to a new way of life, a new culture that can change the world. The most important thing they said is that the culture of giving has entered into us and it really seems like the solution to bring balance and health back to our planet. Thus, they understood that if human beings help each other reciprocally, they lay the foundations for a correct relationship also with nature and find solutions to resolve problems. In the following years, in the different schools where I was transferred, I proposed the project to my classes. And over the years, thousands of students have experienced it. An important moment was receiving in 2012 a prestigious award from the Italian Ministry of Education and the Inter-University Consortium of Chemistry for the for Environment, which, which the Italian one, of course, which wanted to reward the work of awareness and scientific dissemination that we had done. In 2019, five other teachers from schools in various Italian regions, all experts in the culture of giving, shared the project with me, giving birth to an international net worth agreement that multiplied the initiatives and gave new strength to the project. This year, our network was joined by an expert in the organization of projects with economic studies who helped us to spread the project to other schools to look for sponsors who would double the savings of the students to give even more weight to their gesture and to implement twinning with countries that suffer social economic hardships such as Brazil, Colombia, Colombia, Pakistan, the Dominican Republic, 
in Madagascar. Thus, what one of my students had dreamed of confiding to me, I would like this project, my student confided to me, I would like this project to be implemented in all the schools all over the world, and it's coming true. Thank you, Elena. Truly, even if these words, we didn't hear them so well because of the internet, but thank you so much. It is a very interesting project. Now we will return to Daryl. Are you there? Uh, yes, yeah, Chelsea. Okay. <laughs> Finally, Philippines. Yes. In the Philippines. Daryl, in the Philippines, you use this project, hung Zero Hunger, for the youth of 17 to uh, zero, seven to seven. What is your experience? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Lucy. So, just yes, Sonny mentioned earlier, you know, uh, as you know, there are so much need here in the Philippines. So there is a different project from my school. Last May, during the United World Week, we launched the Zero Hunger Project, PH, the Young Ones for Unity in coordination with Living Peace Philippines, is spearheaded the webinar about zero hunger. One of the most notable, notable uh, realization that the students learned from the webinar is that the hunger can be addressed if everyone will desire to share and embrace the culture of giving. Hunger is understood as consequence of inequality. At the end of the webinar, a commitment was made. Everyone was encouraged to join the project. The activity stressed the culture of giving and renewing one's lifestyle, especially in choosing healthy foods. It is also connected in taking care of environment since it encourages the participants to do recycling. The participants of the project are taught to save a penny instead of buying junk foods or any unnecessary things. The money that will be saved will be shared to others. So here are some of the pictures and sharings of the participants that I would like to share with you in PowerPoint. That is the project, the Zero Hunger project that we launched in May. The next slide, please. This is Princess Icy. She said, I volunteered to do this activity as I want to share and be able to help others in this simple yet meaningful way. Looking at the things I gave up, these are mostly the things I want for leisure purposes and not, not really a necessity. This project rekindled my spirit to give hope to people that there is kindness in the world of chaos. If giving up certain things, Seeing smiles that lights me up is a precious and beautiful like diamonds. Another experience. This is from Kate Christine. She said, we conducted the Zero Hunger Project here in Abara Barangay in Bagong Silangan, Quezon City. We personally met pedicab drivers and people who were victims of the Typhoon Ulysses last November 2020. Despite all the experiences they had, they still managed to live and continue fighting for their dreams for whatever calamities came to try and affect them. They still continue to manage to live for their dreams. They inspired me to continue and live for others too. Okay. Another slide, please. This is a cute experience from a five-year-old and two years old. Hello, I am Anaya and with me is my brother, Linda. I am five years old and my brother is two years old. We are from the Philippines. We want to save money to help the needy. I know even we are children, we can help other people, especially the hungry ones, by sharing the gifts that we receive from our parents and our aunt. And lastly, a Jen from Santa Rosa Laguna. She said, I was invited to join the webinar on zero hunger. 
I learned many things in the webinar, such as to not waste food and to practice reuse and recycle. So these are the experiences. Thank you so much. Grazie, Dario. Davvero. Grazie. Thank you so much, Dario. We go ahead. Now, let's talk about the day of the October 16th, of which I spoke before about before. It was translated, this World Food Day, it was translated into 12 languages, such as all those five that we all know, but there was also, for example, Dutch, Urdu, Hindi, Thai, Chinese. We had 3,320 views and the presence of a representative of the UN in Korea. Solely, the event was built together by a network of NGOs and associations. Can you tell us your impression? Do you hear me? Yes, yes, we, we do. Okay. Okay, you, you hear me, right? Yes, we do. We hear you. So, in my opinion, the October 16th event was very important for, for many different reasons. Sorry. You hear me? Yes, we hear you. Okay, so it's fine. So, in my opinion, the event of October 16th was very important for, for, for many reasons, especially for our youth to be able to understand, to share their... No, I think you don't hear me, but you do, don't see me, but you do hear me. Yes, we hear you. We all hear you. We just don't see you. So that's fine. So what I wanted to say is that the meet of the 16th was truly important for our youth to share their experiences, their rich experiences, to share their rich experience, to learn from each other and to move ahead, to go on. So one of the main aspects of the event was the fact that it was completely prepared by the youth themselves. Uh, the adults were in the background. We were in the background, but the youth were at the forefront. They discussed, planned, how to plan and practiced and presented, brilliantly presented in their, on their own practically. Hold on, let me change something here. Ah, now, now, is that better? Anyway, what I wanted to say, I think it was a unique opportunity for those involved in, in the various projects to celebrate their successes and also the challenges in, the, in this global dimension. there are many also challenges to this experience. In addition, the conference gave everyone a chance to learn about the various concepts of food. So the concepts of food and also the specifics of hunger issues in each community and all the different communities in the world. In addition, it was an opportunity to remind the young people that they are not alone that there are so many others around the world, do, in the whole world, doing incredible things, making their small or large contribution to make this world a better place. And now we feel even more strongly, at least I do, that we can count on each other to move forward and to continue to share ideas and admire the beauty of diversity that there is in the world. And that was what it was the experience for all of us. Thank you, Soli, so much. Now we're almost finished. We're a little bit late, but here we have with us Beatrice Cerino. 
Beatrice, are you there? She's involved in the School of Civil Economy in Lopiano and in the economy of Francesco, of Francis. As we know, zero hunger has many points of contact with the economy, economic exploitation and hunger for the for wealth on one hand and economic reconversion and conscious consumption on the other. Can you tell us something more, Bea? And why do you think it is important to educate our children, the adults of tomorrow on these issues? It's important already today, but also for tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity, even though it's briefly, but I will leave my contact information. So if someone is interested to learn something more, because I'm talking to educators. So the concept of education is fundamental because we realize that there is a major limitation that we encounter in the way we usually talk about econ economics in schools and places of aggregation, which is still too much tied to an individualistic model, which places in the max places the maximization of profit the objective of business and wealth is as the goal to be achieved which makes us feel like slaves of the perverse mechanisms of finance that we are unable to dominate but it is not but this is not the case and we have to rediscover the enormous power we have as a civil society in performing individual daily gestures as we have heard so far, and in the enormous possibility of ex exercising our economic sovereignty every time we go shopping, as Elena told, was teaching her students, we have, we, if we don't teach them how to make these distinctions, we don't help them to be able to give, make a distinction between the things that the choices that they make. So we have to help them to discover, to rediscover the enormous potential that we have as a civil society to modify the economy. And it is includes the single gestures that we can make every day that we heard talk about today. We can most show our economic sub sovereignty every time we go shopping, every time we decide where to eat our meal, where to open our bank account. We can, with our wallet, vote every day for responsible com companies, reward with our purchase those who pay workers fairly. That's why we want to talk about this work of ours of into the label, because it is beautiful experience that we can work with the students to show how to make changes. It's an idea of concrete activities to stimulate res responsible consumption. And this is what the idea, the reality of Economy of Francis, which was triggered by the letter of the Pope calling on the youth to help him build a new economy to, that is, and it is giving concrete form to many initiatives, both entrepreneurial and of active citizenship and of academic study, which is also important for a new culture. And also this you will find on the website on the economy of Francis. I would like to leave you with a, one thought. Truly, the very high poverty of Francis, his nothing to own, can open us to the era of common good because we learn to use the resources of the earth and to work as good students and not as predators. Thank you, Elena. Uh, thank you, Beatrice. Also for this reflection, because really, we, we it is all to be learned. Today, we presented a few projects on the application of zero hunger in formation programs, form action programs. But we are sure that many of you who are listening to us with the desire to put into practice the charism of unity have also started so many other projects that it would be great to share them. But since we don't have time to do it here, we thought to create a notice board, 
uh, Padlet, where each of you can now present your project. You can write in your own language at least some of the elements that characterize it, but also a link, an email for a, a person who of referral so that those who are interested can know more and we can create a worldwide network of sharing. In recent months, we have formed an international group of adults and young people involved in this theme to help us and to share experiences and to prepare events together. For example, as the, this October 16th event. So if someone wants more information and would like to stay in touch, you can also write your email address. So now, I think we have to finish. And we'd like to give a big thank you to all of those who have donated their experiences, but also a huge thank you to all of those who have listened and participated. Maybe we can ask ourselves if we want to really continue to live together for this great challenge of humanity. And this, I leave this open question to all of us. Now, we will have 15 minutes of a, a break, a 15 minute break. Then we will all be invited to return to the plenary session. So to go there, we have to go back to Linktree. And there you will find the link to enter into the plenary session. Where we there were plenary session for all the workshops that we had. So we will come together again at 1540 Italian time. Thank you so much to everyone.